and welcome to another Franchise Hockey Magistry. My name is Adam. I'm the community manager of Franchise Hockey. With me, as always, and digitally pictured on your screen is FHM producer Jeff. Say hi, Jeff. Hey, everybody. And we are back with going back to school, Wisconsin Badger 2025-2026 season. Bring on the new recruits. Yep. Uh, been a little this while part... since we were playing this, but... Yeah, I was going to say, this is part 12, Jeff, so we've been doing this for quite a while. Yep, uh, had a disappointing end to the season last year, wound up, we were the favorites going into the uh, national tournament and wound up losing to, you remember who it was? It was a big upset, wasn't it? Or was it Minnesota? <laughs> I got a look here. It was, <laughs> you're correct, yeah, Minnesota shut us out 2-0 uh, in the semifinal. I couldn't remember. And then got beat themselves by Michigan Tech. Yes. So bad enough we had to lose, and we also did it to another Big Ten team. So what I've done here is uh, we that we I think we wound up on the on July first is where we left off last time. So I've sim forward to go through to get through some of the off season stuff, and we are at the uh, home opener now, or actually not the opener. It's on the road to Penn State. But I'll just quickly go through some of the stuff that happened in the off season. Uh, let's see, what is it? I think it should show up in the transaction log. But will it be for the last season or this season? Uh, oh, that's odd. It's not. Am I looking? At? Okay, yeah, no, that's okay. So, well, you can see in this one, this is the end of uh, the last se season on June thirtieth. The guys that came in, the incoming freshman class. Oh no, there it is. Uh, we did lose one guy, but fortunately, it was the one we, uh, you know, we, we what we really didn't want to happen was uh, losing Macklin Celebrini, who's I think uh, what how high did he go? Eighth overall pick by the Flyers last year. Oh, right, right, right. And had a huge rookie year, and is probably going to go on to an even bigger one this year. And we really did not want the Flyers just making, a, making him a contract offer and him taking that this year. And it appears that hasn't happened. The only guy we did lose is the number two center. Get back to that. Uh, William Whitelaw, who was, had a fairly good sophomore year and was probably headed for a big season this year. Uh, but he instead wound up signing in Anaheim. Who drafted him? Let's see, what was it? Uh, in the second round, 59th overall, a couple of years ago. Bit of a surprise that he did that, but he wound up actually making the team out of training camp. And he's got his first NHL goal already. You know, five games into the season. Nice. And actually, it's easier if I just to show you what went on with some of the guys who've left us. Uh, don't really look at this a lot, but the alumni list option. If I sort it by last season, you can see the guys who were outgoing. So, I was just going to point out uh, Chalua Pants is in our chat. Or she, Ch Chalupa Pants says, Badger alumni checking in, don't mess this up. <laughs> oh, it's, it's much too late for that. We've already messed it up. <laughs> that was last year. Uh, oh, we don't get a pop-up on this screen. I have to get that fixed. But uh, Kulemans is also... Uh, who also left the end of last season. He wound up signing in Columbus, and he's playing uh, in the NHL this year as well. So we got two NHL rookies coming off the roster. Uh, Caden Brown looks like he signed in Florida of the ECHL, hasn't played yet. Zachary Erdahl, who missed most of last season, what was it, with uh, Torres UCL right at the beginning of the season. And I think we got him back in time for the playoffs, but... In, uh, didn't really help us. Uh, he didn't do a whole lot in the time he was here, but he's graduated now and wound up signing with Orlando with the ECHL. And the other guy who's uh, graduated this year and is, hasn't uh, signed somewhere, I don't know, this is just Latch and, oh, well, Atlantic Semi-Pro, he's basically playing beer league hockey. And the other three guys graduated, Malquist, Morrison, and Garrity, the walk-on goalie. Uh, Evan are free agents and will probably be out uh, fairly soon, I think. And we can also check the uh, drafted list. 
to see which guys we've had taken in the last couple of drafts. Uh, this year, uh, you can see, well, last year it was uh, Celebrini, that number one pick, and a couple of late rounders. In the seventh rounder, uh, this year we had another first rounder, which is the, uh, well, more about him in a second, uh, Steinhoff, who was uh, picked by Detroit late in the first round. And Steinhoff, coming in as a freshman, is already five stars out of five. So he's going to be really good. He should, uh, and that more than makes up for losing Kuhlemans, I think. The only thing is, we're looking right now. If you take, if I looking down the roster, a little thin at forward. I'm just going to point out our goalie was decided he is smart enough and can play this year. Oh right, right, right. Yeah, that's uh, actually there's a little bit of a bug there. Elias, the goalie, was uh, redshirted last year because he didn't qualify academically, and uh, it's showing, it's still showing up with academic nay eligibility set to no. But that appears just to be a display bug, because uh, Pino's got the same thing. But I am able to dress them and play them in games, which is how Elias got hurt, because I had him in the lineup for an exhibition game, and he managed to concuss himself. Ah. So off to a fine start, a uh, guy who should have been our starting goalie at the beginning of last year, and will still be a little while, another, what, couple of weeks before he'll play his first game. Probably. Do you think about how... Uh... How he probably got concussed. I'd like to think he was in the net and got so far in he didn't realize and then hit his head on the crossbar. Could be. <laughs> I mean, it sounds as plaus plausible as anything else. Uh, we did have one, uh, speaking of the academic stuff, one thing did go wrong. Uh, Pontus Svensson, Swedish defenseman, uh, who was uh, going to come in as a freshman, didn't qualify academically. And looking at him, he was only two stars, so I just let him walk rather than wasting a roster spot on them and yeah i mean we, if we take a walk on we could probably get somebody of similar quality and we don't even really need that because we're fairly deep at d i did uh choose to redshirt one guy nathan cam uh if Elias hadn't come back he probably would have been the backup this year and he's already gotten half he's moved up a half star in ability uh since the start of the season he came in on july 1st he was one star so i'm going to redshirt him now and then Let's see, Breveris and Elias will probably do the, yeah, he'll, hmm. That's actually, I didn't really think about the goaltending situation next year. It's going to be a little complicated. We'll have, we have three good guys. And then we've got a couple of spares. Uh, I think Robotham was one of the guys who took on as a walk-on and Ironside's a recruit. Uh, two stars or something goes horribly wrong. He'll find himself in this year, but probably not going to play a whole lot for us and we did have one other injury during exhibition season Boston Buckberger uh, bruised his wrist uh, he's just back already to day to day so that won't, that won't be too much longer and other than that uh, I think I've got the lines yeah I set up the lines already uh, Celebrini and Stramel obviously going to be the big line and we'll try Gosik at the uh, Starting out on that, Steinhoff's already in the top left defenseman spot. I think I'm okay with the special teams. And what else was going to Oh, tactics. We'll take a look through those to see if they make sure they still fit with uh, what we've got. Uh, along boards apparently is a great choice. A uh, bunch of good and great fits. Same with neutral balance for the neutral zone offense. Uh, crash the net. Can we do better than that? None. Well, Antonio is kind of is going to get some ice time, but the other two aren't that important. So I think I'm going to go with lane positioning for offensive zone. Attacking. It looks like that's going to fit. Uh, Fortrek can stay as it is. Power play breakout's still good. Offensive zone attacking seems okay. Maybe take a look at the shorthanded systems. Hmm. No, actually, it looks like that's the best one. Hmm. 
that will go with puck position on uh, where you get the puck while we're shorthanded. And I think I will leave the tactical tendencies as they were last year. So he should be all ready to go now. The opening against uh, was, er, Penn State was already eh, won two games. And 4 nothing shutout. And Carson Steinhoff in his first college game is the first star. All right, nice. Yep. And now which goal? Yeah, that was Riveras and goal. Good start. And playing Penn State again the next day. If you haven't seen these streams before, this is the way this co the college schedules tend to work. It's back-to-back uh, -back games on every weekend, or most weekends at least. And other than a few, uh, it gets broken up a little bit around Christmas where you don't have that exact format, but for the most part, you're playing uh, two games in a row on, on Saturday and Sunday every day, or Friday and Saturday every week. So that has some implications for the way you use your goaltending because you're always going to have the starter being a little bit tired for the second one, but I think I will go with him again. I, since he got the shutout in the opener. And 4-1 one, one win this time. And this time the other defenseman, Dexheimer, is the first star. So, good start. So, Adam, how are the Jets doing? Well, they're in the playoffs, Jeff. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. How's the, how's the Canucks doing? Oh, thank you for that. That, that <laughs> actually, that... the. Goal in the over that double overtime goal was traumatic to watch because it's that was pretty much identical to uh when where they give it out where they handed the puck to, or well, it got deflected to uh Modio, I guess. But the I positioning mean, at the start of the play and where the where the shot came from was basically the same as the first game of the 82 finals by the Canucks. When Harold yeah. Snaps was, the overtime was just about to end and Snaps decided to throw it up the middle. And the positioning was exactly the same and the shot came from the same place. So that was fun having that trauma uh, inflicted again. I mean, they are just keep having guys getting injured. Yeah, Shifley's and, oh, out for the oh, next one, eh? Florida won. Huh. Uh, yeah, Shifley's out. Um but Nick Ehlers might make his return. Which would be a boost. Yeah, I'm well, going to need it with Shifley gone. The... Uh, J losing Josh Morrissey is what's really hurting right now. Yeah. And incredibly, both the Oilers and the Leafs are winning their series. That's a little disturbing. Uh, not completely unexpected. No, but still, you, at least one of them usually manages to blow it, although there's still time for that yet. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention, we uh, one of the incoming freshmen, uh, like this was two weeks after the, uh, in really early July, just after he joined the team, wound up uh, getting involved in an off-ice incident, and he's upset with three of the guys on the team now. And Jeremy St. Marie, one of the other uh, freshmen, isn't happy with him. And he's also managed to form a clique around himself. So Lucas Kaplan is... Mm. I'm not even dressing him right now because he's been that annoying. So we should try and get rid of that part. Oh, wonderful. So uh, what I did there was try to have the captain, Celebrini, who I gave the captaincy this year... <coughs> To intervene in the dispute and uh, try to convince St. Marie not to be unhappy with Kaplan anymore. But instead, no, St. Marie doesn't like Celebrini either. Mm. So I've made the problem worse. Time to send him away. Well, it's college, Joe. We can't really do that. Can't, why can't you revoke a scholarship? <laughs> and Delius is still out for... Wait, was that... One to two weeks before now, it's two to three? It was one to two weeks, yes. Oh, great. And Buckberger is healthy. Really hard. Yeah. Uh, 
Chaplin for Buckberger. And forwards, I think, can stay as they are. Oh, I should didn't really go through the incoming freshmen this year. Uh, Elias, obviously, the goaltender who was redshirted last year because he couldn't qualify academically and has now hurt himself. Uh, Ironside, a walk on, no scholarship, uh, probably not going to play that much. Cam, pretty good goalie recruit who's going to redshirt this year. Uh, Seneschal, uh, probably a seventh, eighth defenseman type. Let's, let's just point out Ironside is an awesome last name. Carson Ironside is a pretty good hockey game. Hockey name, yeah. And another Carson, Carson Steinhoff, is the uh, star recruit of the class. Uh, Ross Rollison, again, not going to play too much. Uh, speaking of which, Jeff, did you see the great name that showed up on our Reddit? Or no. subreddit? What was it? Uh, Matthew Matthew. Ah. Nice and alliterative. Is it, are both Matthews spelled the same way? They are. Impressive. M-A-T-H-I-E-U. Oh, not even the uh, English spelling. Wow. No, no. Matthew, Matthew. Okay, and we can see we've got a few other guys who aren't in the lineup right now. The only other uh, freshman side, Steinhoff, who's actually playing us, playing for us right now, are our, uh, Ratty, who's uh, Tyson Ratty's little brother, and uh, William Arlick, uh, Swedish player who's two stars straight now and we're a little thin at center which is why he's playing for us, us at the moment that's probably the white law signing got him into the lineup so we're against Denver we will leave Bruveris in goal he's starting to warm up a little bit and a 6-1 win Charlie Stramel with a hat trick oh just looking at this thread uh somebody says that in their recent game Carolina drafted a player named Peter Peter <laughs> Surprised we're getting that many of them. It doesn't it it's completely random chance. I mean no. the uh I mean to be yeah. fair, there was an NHL goalie named Pete Peters. So it's not like it's that impossible, but we should have had a sanity check just to root <laughs> out names that parents would obviously reject as cruel. Well there's there's a clip of, uh, what is it, of fa on Family Feud that always makes its rounds every once in a while of a guy whose first name, middle name, last name are all the same. What is it? I can't, I can't remember. It's, uh, it's, it kind of uh, kills the punchline. <laughs> well, no, but it's, it's, a, it's an African family or whatever, and they, they're like, oh, the brother's like egging him on, being like, ask him what his middle name is, ask him what his middle name is. And then they turn around, and the dad's there, and then... And then the dad says that's his name, too. <laughs> and we get an overtime win there. A little closer, but still a 4-3 win. And another one of the defense with now Horbach getting a first star. So the D is showing up even. Oh, no. That's not good. Uh-oh. Ah, Celebrini is injured. Hold your breath. Let's see what it is. It's red. Uh, knee contusion, one or two weeks only. Big sigh of relief there. Okay, and Kaplan, you want to be a problem? Let's see how you do on the first line for a week or so. Yeah, hopefully the Jets can uh, at least stretch it out a few more games. Don't really want to see them go out in five. I don't either, but they're going to have a tough go to win one. But they can. Surprised well, Seattle's the been is... as close as with Colorado as they have. Yeah. Hellebuck hasn't had a really good game yet. Like, he's played fine. Yeah, that the overtime goal was a little bit great. Really, very much like Vasilevsky. Vasilevsky's probably played worse, though. Did, yeah, you, I mean, did it... you see Derek Lalonde, like, just, like, trashing the, him on, on TV? <laughs> I mean, the Leafs have been doing a pretty good job of getting traffic in front of them. And oh, definitely, but, like, I, I, couldn't, him, but... I couldn't believe Derek Lalonde's going on TV saying this, and then John Cooper called him out. 
today it was, I think. Okay, Celebrini is going to be hurt for this game against North Dakota. So let's see what Kaplan does in the first spot. And that's not good. Our first loss of the season, 5-2 to North Dakota. So I mean, apparently you have they, to lose at some point. Yeah, the D can't carry us when the uh, best forward is gone. So I think I'm going to have to switch the lines around a little bit for this second game. Old and slow says, wow, my alma mater won the national title. Yeah, Michigan Tech, awesome. thanks to us getting upset by Minnesota in the semifinal. Just pointing out great, great username there. Old and slow. Okay. Oh, great. horbox has got a, uh, just a little facial cut. I think that's going to be enough to take him under the lineup. And we'll put in Pino, who was redshirted last year, I think. And I'm going to make the changes here on this screen since these are non-permanent when you do them on the uh, pregame screen. Uh, since these are just short-term injuries and they're not going to be the lasting that long, and I will give Robotham the start. And just see how he does. And comes up with a 4-1 to one win. And Steinhoff, I think, carried us a uh, goal and assist. And well, 5 1 start to the season, not too bad. Still undefeated in the conference. Uh, looks like Mercyhurst is off to a 5 0 start. I'll take a quick look in a second and see if there's anybody else left undefeated. And we were named as the uh, favorites to uh, win the national championship in the season preview. So, oh, so we're definitely not winning then. Yeah, I know. That's jinxed us already coming out of the gate. Okay, yeah. Ilias is okay. at least starting to skate now. We are ranked sixth in the country. And we've got a couple of teams who've had overtime losses, but Mercyhurst and Bowling Green are the remaining undefeated teams. And just looking at the uh, longer term uh, for us, the graduating guys this year are going to be Robotham, not a big deal. Tyson Jugnoth, who is that's going to hurt, although yes, he is off to a great start. Dexheimer has been playing well, so we're going to lose. And Horbach, we're going to lose a big chunk of the D, but as long as Steinhoff doesn't leave, we'll still be in decent shape. Uh, Robbie Newton, center, who's never really played much for us. And this is Cruz Lucius, uh, Chaz Lucius's younger brother, his senior year. So he hasn't started fast, but had a pretty good year last year. And Charlie Stramel, uh, the I'm surprised he's lasted the full four years with us, but we'll take it. So there's actually quite a bit of talent going out this season, and hopefully we can do pretty well on signing day to replace some of that, which is coming up uh, just momentarily, actually. We're almost to November 1st. And Harbeck said he's ready, but oh yeah, he is. Oh, did I put Rollis in there instead of Pino? Whoops. I'm lucky to win that. And I think we'll get, yeah, we get the Ohio State game on 31st, yeah, Halloween, and it should be the signing day the next day. It's November 1st, isn't it, or is it the 10th? No, it's a 10th. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. It's a 10th. Celebrating still day to day. So we will do the same thing with the centers. The other, the rest of it can stay as it is, though. And an easy 6 1 win. Cruz Lucius, the four assists. Nice. Looks like Minnesota started well. And I think Michigan has lost 
they should have had most of their big recruits from the last from the, from the start of the game gone by this point. Let me take a look at those two teams and see how they're looking. Okay, Davidson, sophomore defenseman, pretty good. Roy Chung, another sophomore. Okay, a couple of good sophomore defensemen. Serato, junior winger. So it's they got some depth, but not what they had uh, like two, three years ago. So they're beatable. And Minnesota, who knocked us off last year. Okay, good goalie. That's not great. Pretty good through the D, and they're all sophomores or juniors, so they're going to be around for a while yet. But not a lot of depth, although it looks like they've got a pretty good uh, right-wing recruiting where they aren't playing yet. A hmm. uh, question in the oh, chat. Oh, he's Richard. Okay, that's why. From Frozen Pineapple Gaming says, can you run multiple seasons of NHL teams in this, like, go till 2030, for example? Uh, 2030, uh, 2130, 2230. However long you want to go, we had what's the latest one we've had? Uh, somebody, I think somebody in Reddit had it going for like what a couple hundred hundred years, wasn't it? Yeah, um, we we've had a confirmed one of at least ninety years, and I've seen some people well into the twenty sixties for sure. Bump up the team morale, spending a little bit, and now play game two, and I'm going to keep Kaplan on the second line. Leave Rivera in because we're going to be starting Elias a lot fairly soon once he's healthy and comes up with a shutout. And there's also historical mode so you can start the NHL in 1917 as well. So that would probably be the way to get a get a, get really far into the future, since it runs a little faster with a smaller number of teams than standard mode. But you could uh, probably run off a few hundred years in relatively short order, and if you want, just let it sim for a few days. Okay, Celebrini is almost back. Athletic director is pretty much happy with everything and says we're, he expects us to contend pretty much for the immediate future. Okay, celebrating day to day, we should have him back for this next series against, I uh, don't see it yet. And then the, uh, we're about we're a week away from National Signing Day. And Michigan State yet to win a game. Well, I mean, they weren't going to be undefeated forever. Michigan State was undefeated. Did I miss something? No, no, no. I just meant... Was it, oh, was it, wasn't it Michigan State who won last no, year? Or Michigan, Michigan, Tech. Michigan, Tech. Michigan Tech. Michigan Tech. I'm sorry. There's too yeah. many universities that are so similar. <laughs> okay, enough to number four in the country. And Bowling Green uh, on a couple of the uh, Ivies since their season started playing are uh, undefeated as well, too. But they'll, Cornell and Dartmouth, they'll probably drop out fairly quickly. So we should be moving up, assuming we can keep winning, but Bowling Green is at the top for now. Let's have a quick look at what they are. 8-0 to start the season. Oh, actually, wait a second. Uh, back that up. And uh, disruptive hostility in Team Harmony, so I'll have a look at that as well. Goaltending is not at all impressive. Uh, fairly inexperienced junior who last played uh, has been sitting on the bench I guess for the last two years they must add some seniors to part the D is not great okay they've got some scoring up front that seems to be what's driving them and leading scorer okay yeah a few good forwards that's about it 
and what's going wrong internally with them. Uh, just one click and then a couple of conflicts. Not really a huge problem, we're about the same. Okay, and, and Michael Celebrini is back just in time to play against Minnesota. I thought you were going to say back in time just to get hurt again. We'll see. Uh, Kaplan did okay, two points in four games. Wondering if I should I'm going to swap him with Zap, the uh, third liner, despite the great name. Oh, wait, no, was that the second liner or was that Arlick? Arlick, no, Arlick is the third liner, that's right. Okay, we'll do it like that. Elias is okay, he's day to day now at least. That's better. And 2 nothing shutout. Rivera has a good game. Celebrity hasn't been scoring a whole lot this year. I mean, if, even with a couple of games missed, I kind of expect him to see, to see him up there in points, but kind of a slow start, so that maybe the fires were right and not... Uh, Ewag, I will ban you from this chat. <laughs> what do you say? Adam, how are your Leafs doing? <laughs> Didn't I ask you pretty much the same thing? Yeah, but I can't ban you. I can uh, okay. I can ban ban Pwog. Uh, I'm gonna give Roboth one more game. I will also start a game. Soon. I will start a stream game of Detroit. Trade away everybody. Trade away all their future picks, and then leave the game, <laughs> and go join another team. And saying Celebrini wasn't scoring seems to work because he had. It was in on all three goals. 3-2 win over Minnesota, so we take both ends of the doubleheader against Minnesota. How oh, Gray and Steinhoff's hurt. All the injuries, Jeff. All the injuries. Sore back one to two weeks. And he will go out for Chapman. And we will be two to through the National Signing Day in a couple of days. Uh, I'll take a quick look to see if uh, Bowling Green stayed undefeated this weekend. So one thing with the college league being so big, I can't see the whole league at one glance. Over 60 playable teams. 61. We're going to be going up next year, I guess. We've got a couple of teams that should be playing full Division One schedules. And Bowling Green lost both ends of their doubleheader to who? St. Thomas. Wow. That's an upset. Okay, so they're not going to be number one in the country anymore. And Will Scahan apparently is sick with conjunctivitis. But he was in the lineup? Yes, he was in the lineup. Okay, that's not great. But we got National Signing Day to worry about now. And the so order did you will... says there it ain't no way Cruz Lucius is there in 2025-2026. Well, he stayed in this game. He, was, he had a really slow start in this. His first two years weren't impressive. So he wound up sticking around. And this was uh, with a fairly early version of the ratings, so he may be a little underrated in this game. Okay, it looks like uh, Alaska Anchorage gets to make the first nomination ahead of us. And interesting commitments. We're going to look only at the 18-year-olds. We've only got a couple of guys uh, committed who are going to be eligible to... to uh, <clears throat> Signed this year, but Jarrett Ross, a uh, defenseman in the Alberta Junior League, looks pretty good. He's at two and a half stars already. Uh, and we got a few Swedish goalie who are not going to touch that half star potential. Pwog asks, How's Lake Superior doing? Pwog Lake Superior is not good. Four, five, and one. Seventh out of eight in the CCHA. 
and open hostility. Okay, we're talking about got some depth on that team. Goaltending is questionable, but doesn't look like, well, now the forwards, forwards after the first two lines really drop off. Really good group of defensemen, though. But anyhow, National Signing Day. And is that, uh, yeah, it's Mark St. Louis. Louis kid. Yep. So, Not the same height as him. And Alaska takes a kid from Alaska, from Alaska so we're not going to get him, so I'm not even going to. I'll offer him a full scholarship. He might come. Now I'm going to let that go, and we'll just focus on our own guys for this. And Ross is actually the uh, one of the highest potential guys in the game, so definitely nominating him here with a full scholarship. How many scholarships have we got? Oh, we've only got uh, one open one now and four seniors gradu graduating with scholarships, so we're a little limited on what we can do. I think I'm going to have to offer some partial ones. And we got Ross. So it'll take a minute to go through all 60 teams. And remember, this isn't quite like a normal draft, since every time a team nominates a player, all the teams can still compete for him. So it takes a little bit longer to go through the draft that way. Doesn't look like anybody really lost a lot of... Yeah, no. Nope. Which all going to form. That's surprising. Usually in other, the other years we've done this, there's been a lot of guys uh, switching their verbal commitments and going to a different school, but that's pretty consistently... Uh, I didn't see one switch there. Yeah, Interesting. Surprising. So... Offers St. Louis. He's still there, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Is he committed to anybody? Committed to Denver. I think it's worth trying to pry him out. At 17, yeah, he's three stars already. Uh, let's take a swing. Wait, where did it say he was playing? Seven arm. UCHL? Okay, okay. Why? I, th I saw... Okay. Why? What did you think he was? Well, I didn't know. I, just, I saw the SAL and I got confused because I thought that was the league. Oh. South Atlantic League. And St. Louis is going to come with us. So good. We, got, we stole him from Denver. Oh, it's showing nomination and signing is yeah, us. Okay. Yeah, well. So maybe that's why then. Huh? Okay. Oh, commitment search aren't showing up as consistently. I think that's a little odd. I think this may be the because we started this with a really early version of the game. Yeah, but it was work. Wasn't it not working on the previous ones? Can't remember. I have to go back and look. I thought it was. Okay, we know we're kind of got a log job in goal, so I'm going to avoid the goalies for now. And there's another pretty good forward there. Another, well, Sam Michelle, although he's 21. Um, so he was in Canadian University? Yeah, I've been trying to figure out how to get re stop that from happening. The Canadian University guys really shouldn't be showing up as eligible for this. Could you go to the U.S. Sure, just league? Transfer, yep. I don't know how often it's been done, but it's certainly doable. Uh, I think I'm going to go with uh, stick with the younger guys. And we're a little yeah, what about that Dubois? You think him? I don't know. I just I wanted to know a little more. Uh, Only half star, though, so that's not exactly great. Don't have him thoroughly scouted, and our scouting is still disappointing. I have to go back and take yet another look at that before I've got it set up. That's just sort by current ability. See if anyone pops out. It'll all be the 21 year olds, I think. Uh, well, there's one. Oh, he's a goalie, though. And Dubois shows up as the best of the 17 year olds, so I think I'm going to go with him. Because we are going to be losing a couple of guys to uh, a couple of uh, senior defensemen this year. 
and give him a full, I think that's a, that'll be the last full scholarship I offered, and that's three I've nominated so far. And I had uh, four plus one, five to use, so I should have four partial scholarships to give here now. And we get Dubois, so. Not surprising, we've got a pretty good program now, guys want to come here. Uh, I've got a 16 year old here, it must be an early birth date. No, that shouldn't even be possible now, I think he's born November 21st, so he'll be 17, oh no, he'll be 18 early next season, yeah, that's fine. He'll technically be 17 at the start of the year, but... Oh, Sam Shelley. I'm going to try for this guy. He is 21 already, but... And he joins. Uh, didn't really have any information on him, so hopefully he's not an idiot. You just getting caught up on the news? But yes, the Global Series is back. Going to Sweden. Red Wings, Minnesota, Ottawa, and Toronto. And grab that 16-year-old. He was one of your commitments, was he not? I thought it said. Who? That 16-year-old, Calvin Woods. Nope. Uh... I thought I saw something about Wisconsin Badgers on his profile. I don't think so. That was probably just uh, from the interface showing us. Uh, what do I got here? Is it something about drafted or something? I thought. Hmm. Should take one more defense, but not. Is there a 17 year old defenseman somewhere here? Nobody good, so I'm going to go I think you should be looking guy. for a 20 year old defenseman. A lot of Quebec guys for some reason this year. And again, this was started with an early version of the database, and you'll get a lot more Americans if you start uh, a new college game now. I made some changes that will generate more of those guys. And really don't need a goalie. You know, we got committed, we've got, and committed is Brown, the goalie, who we have really no real interest in. Uh, there's a, I'm going to try this. I'm not going to offer him a scholarship, but we'll try for that 20-year-old goalie. And he will join, that's good. Just uh, filling the roster out at this point. Yeah, odd number of Quebec case, uh, base guys this year. I don't remember seeing that in previous seasons. We've still got a lot of roster room, so I might as well just keep filling in. No, apparently not. Must be at the roster limit. Okay, so... I will stop nominating and we'll let the CP... The... Yeah, I finished that draft up. Is there any rights we could have really released? Uh, well, no, I can't. You can technically do that, but it's sort of cheating. Oh, why am I in like Superior? I want to see. That's all Pewog's fault. 
Okay, so pretty good recruit class. Uh, four potential five-star guys, although some of them are a little older and may not make it. And no real bad ones. Yeah, reasonably satisfied with that. I think we'll get a good group of replacements in for the graduating uh, seniors this year. And are we number one? Yes, we are. Nine one no. And Elias is finally Almo and nope, he's still red. That's our scan Steinhoff, but hopefully that changes in the next couple of days. We got yeah, that's ten two, we still got time. So off to a good start, solid signing day. So far, so good. And we got LIU next, so I'm not sure how they are at this point. They should have been. There's a little bit of an oddity uh, with the way their player years were set up at the beginning of the game, so they wound up with a bunch of 26, 27 year old seniors, so they were really good for one season. But it looks like they've slipped back now, three and four this year. And yeah, still a little older, but not quite what they were for that one year. And who's healthy? Uh, Elias is healthy enough to dress, but I'm not going to start him. Scan and Steinhoff, unfortunately, still out. Juggle the lines for this one game. Oh, Elias wound up as a starter. Didn't mean to do that. But he did play. We got an 8-3 win. So maybe not a great game from him, but we gave him lots of support. And draft lottery coming up week after next, Adam. Uh, what do you think the Canucks' chances are? 50-50. Sure. It either happens or it doesn't. I'm going to go with it doesn't. Okay, I think everybody is still. Oh, Elias is actually healthy now after playing that first game. But I will just uh, give Riveris the. Yeah, there he is. Second start and 6 1 win. Tate and Reddy, the freshman, is first star. And I think we got enough, yeah, still got time. Uh, starting to see some of our guys climb up the scoring leaders now. Gorsik is, well, was in the top 10 briefly. But we should be number one in the country again. And Michigan State finally won a couple of games, looks like. Steinhoff, still day to day. Yeah, we just have slightly longer gaps because of the way the schedule is set up uh, from game to game now. As you're going five days without any games or if it happens to skip a week, uh, full couple of weeks between games often. Okay, Steinhoff may be ready now. We're almost there. I think we actually skipped a week this week. I'll have to check the schedule there. Oh, no. Well, we got the last Anchorage today. Okay. But we do have next week off. Steinhoff is out. Skahan is in. Oh, 
Oh yeah, Jeff, I forgot to ask you, how'd you like Hyman's goal last night? Uh, didn't see it. <clears throat> Bouchard with a point shot to his face and in. Oh, nice five-one win for us. Uh, but we lost our third line center William Arlick. Now just day to day with a sore groin, so Zap gets to go back in now. Steinoff says he can play if we want him to, but now nah, we'll let him get healthy all the way. And now we're probably going to start splitting games between the two goalies since they're relatively close. Ah, that was actually kind of narrow. 4-3 overtime went over Alaska Anchorage. Stramo first star with a couple of assists. But anyhow, we continue. 13-1 and one start. Impressive. And it looks like the uh, Ivy League teams with the late start have uh, mostly caught up with everybody else now, so we shouldn't be seeing them near the top anymore. So we should get a pretty good idea of who the real top 10 is in the next poll. Oh, I've missed Pewog says, I bet the Wings get screwed in the lotto again. Can't be any worse than the Canucks. And then Pewog asking, do you two pay attention to the NFL draft? <laughs> Of course, Bewog. I am a big Packers fan. And I am sort of a middling Bucks fan. It's kind of hard to read from them when uh, the last couple of years. It's felt like cheating. Just switching the lines around here a little bit. And try to stein off on the second pair for a while. Uh, 40 goal goal differential already. We'll have to take a look at our team scoring in a second. Oh yeah, we got that uh, week off this week, so it'll be a little while before we get around to the next game. Harlick is healthy, but how do the numbers look? Okay, Gosick off to a really good start. Way past his freshman totals already. So putting him on the first line definitely worked out. Stramel having a Decent senior year, Celebrini, uh, he'll get caught up, scoring a little bit more now. And then looking at everybody else, Cruz Lucius a little bit slow, only one goal in his first 14 games. Steinoff's been good when he's been playing. Uh, Kaplan's done okay-ish for a guy that causes a lot of problems. Speaking of which, I'll see if I can fix that. I think it's time for another intervention. Hopefully celebrating it doesn't mess this one up. And the goalie stats. Oh yeah, great start for Bavaris. 1.39 goals against average. Nice. Save percentage in the 920s. And Elias is done okay, not spectacular. And you know a really good defenseman? You should put him in net for a game, see what happens. I think that's probably a bad idea. Actually, I know what'll happen if I do that. It'll probably crash the game. <laughs> really? If it uh, if he has to if he's if it has to use as a position player in that, uh, and I don't think it's it'll happen. I don't think it happens instantly. But there's one or two events where he's it's going to need a rating that's not there, and that'll cause a crash. Mm. Uh, I was going to do something. What was it? Oh, intervention. 
Oh, so actually, Saint Marie is now happy with Kaplan. He just doesn't like uh, celebrating and sal celebrating can't intervene in the zone. So let's see if we can get him happier with Dexheimer. Nope, ineffective. Interface isn't great on that option. I think we're gonna change that a little bit next year. I feel like it's got to be like a Pokemon thing almost. What? The captain chooses intervention. It is not effective. <laughs> That's specific text, huh? I think it would be pretty funny. Yes. Have a, like a little angry face. Yeah, it's not going to get a suit. <laughs> uh, Pwok says, hence the option for emergency goalie. LOL. I saw people complaining about emergency goalies again, and someone's just like, "Why? Why does this league have it?" It's like, well, they've actually like literally had it for years. I think they should make position players play goal. That'd be more entertaining. Well, but, but I mean, like they've they've literally like back in NHL history have pulled guys out of the stand, and be like, "Hey, we need a goalie. Anybody here play goalie?" Yeah, but that was like oh, you? okay. Let, most yeah, most of that start. happened back when there was only single goalies. I know, but that's still an emergency goalie. We wasn't we wasn't with a team. And I'm just going to set the monthly budget because we're almost out of time here. That can stay as it is. I the Jets, for some reason, goal. are are hurting the Moose by having four goalies on the team right now. Why well, have they got four goalies on the team? Well, Riddick's hurt, so they called up Arvin Holm. Yeah. And then when, when they went to Vegas, they brought Hellebuck, Riddick, who hasn't skated yet, home and then they called up oscar salamaki too so why they call up salamaki <laughs> just in case something happens well, it's kind of paranoid well in the playoffs they can actually dress a third goalie as an emergency yeah so and anyhow there's the uh, national poll and we are number one overall i guess bowling green bounced back from those losses they're still there at number two minnesota duluth not seeing any other Big Ten teams. Oh, they're finally Michigan at 12. Does Minnesota drop down? Minnesota's dropped right out. What's happened to them? No, 9-6-1 there. Probably a little bit lower, just out of the top 20. And defending national champion Michigan Tech, where are they? Wow, seven and nine start. That's rough. Big freshman recruit here, too. Five stars. I think they lost a few guys, although Lavagna, who I think was their best player in the playoffs, is having a big year. But still surprising they're below 500. Okay, I think we're about out of time here, Adam. So do you want to wind it up there? Sure. I'm just going to that, step be... forward a little farther. All right. Well, thank you very much for tuning into another Franchise Hockey Manager stream. We typically stream every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash OOTPitVillmans. All of our streams are archived on our YouTube channel, which is YouTube. Uh, no, I, you know what? I'm restarting this because I did not like the way I was doing that. And I feel like I missed something. So let's let's restart. Okay. Thank you very much for tuning in to another Franchise Hockey Manager stream. We typically stream Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern on Twitch.tv slash Franchise Hockey Manager as well as Twitch.tv slash OOTP Developments with streams every other week on our theme page like we are doing right now. All of our streams are archived on our YouTube channel, which is YouTube.com slash OOTP Developments with our archives going live at about 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sundays. Uh, if you want to talk to us more you can talk to us on facebook.com slash franchise hockey manager on twitter for now is at franchise hockey with a link to our official discord in our twitter bio and of course you can come down to our official website which is ootpdevelopments.com click on the community button in the top right hand corner which will bring you to official forums where you can come talk about franchise hockey manager at park baseball perfect team go or anything else you wish to discuss jeff did i miss anything that time nope uh just looking at the advanced stats surprisingly tate and ratty uh this is at the top of our coursing numbers. Freshman who hasn't even scored a goal yet. So that's interesting. 
but I think that's a pretty successful start. Decent recruiting class, and we are 13-1 to start the season and first in the country, so it can only get worse from here, and it probably will. But so far, so good. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming out. Uh, we are continuing to uh, wait while we're still reading the forums, so if you want to check in there, uh, we'll still be reading that. Uh, we're kind of, in, kind of in full steam into development of FHM 10 now. So it'll be a while before I can talk about any of the new features in that, although I'd have mentioned one or two on the stream already. But uh, hopefully I'll be able to send, tell you a little bit more about that as we get uh, further into the summer, but everything's going fine there. So I, I guess we will be back next week with uh, Adam's Columbus game. Uh, what were, what point did you play last week? I had to skip last yes. Wednesday. Yeah. What, uh, yeah, what, we uh, did. How far did you get? uh we're close to december i think just taking a quick look here uh yes just in december and we were doing all right but uh our big off-season pickup hasn't been scoring like we were hoping yeah and it's still a fairly young team so i think you're about another year or two away but that should be good and yeah. another uh, couple of streams well three or four maybe but uh, we'll be doing that next week, so if you want to come back and have another look again, you can see Adam's uh, historical Columbus game. So thanks for coming out, everybody, and we will see you next week.